He who comes from above is above all. And that would be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has come from above, born of God, born of a woman under the law, but born of God, the God-man. We're speaking today concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, the righteousness that comes by faith, the salvation that's available to all men through the Lord Jesus Christ. We speak these things with boldness today because God has put an unction of the Holy Spirit in our heart that that which we speak is of the truth because we've seen and bear, borne witness of the truth, which is the Lord from heaven. We've seen him. We've tasted of him. He has apprehended us, taken us captives unto his will, unto his purpose, that we might serve him with an open heart. So we thank God for the opportunity to share these things. And we're doing a series here in the Gospel of John, going uh, verse by verse through the entire Scripture. So this is somewhat of an undertaking, but I uh, feel to do this as uh, just an offering to the Lord. Hopefully it'll bless someone and, and be a benefit. And we look for the Lord to open up the eyes of people's spiritual understanding that they might see those things that God has freely given unto us. And of course... If there's a requirement, the requirement is for us, as the Lord presents himself openly to us as a living sacrifice, and he has become the lamb that takes away the sin of the world, and we behold him, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We see Jesus, the word made flesh, who came and dwelt among us as a man. We see him today, not in flesh and blood. We don't know him by, the, by flesh, but we know him by the Spirit. And yet we see him in our brethren, we see him in our sisters, we see him in the church and those that have been called out. So we give glory to the name of the Lord today, who's called us for this purpose, that we might be joined together as one body, as one man, and that we might manifest by his grace through the Holy Spirit and according to the fruits of the Spirit that work in us, that are being developed as we yield our lives unto him, we look for this reality, this truth of the Spirit of God. That which has been written down in the Scripture is written now in our heart. A living word is to be manifested day by day. So we don't get caught up just in the fact that there's a great understanding and knowledge that we, have, we can attain to according to the Scripture. Knowledge can puff up and cause us to be prideful and arrogant in that which we've received according to intellectual understanding, but we're looking for the understanding of the Spirit that we can live out through every circumstance. And this is the life that Christ has given us, the abundant life, that we might walk not by sight right now or not by the hearing of the natural ears, not according to our flesh, but according to the Spirit who is manifest in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, we can get a lot out of the Word of God which is why we're making these videos. And if you are blessed by these, just encourage you to like the videos, you hit the little like button, the little thumbs up, and you can subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, you hit the bell notification, which allows you to, that the, the YouTube uh, way is that it'll actually show every time that a new video is released and you'll get a little notification, whether it's on your phone or whatever it is. Uh, and then finally, you can share this video if you like. And I want to make quite clear, as I try to whenever I share uh, these videos and, and you know ask people if they'd like to subscribe or like or share these videos, that this is not, we're not making these videos for any uh, benefit of, of uh, uh, Finances. We're not. We never ever ask for money on these uh, on these videos. We're not looking for offerings. Uh, we're not really even looking for necessarily a following, except that people would turn their hearts towards the Lord and follow Christ Jesus, the Lord. So whenever we do this, uh, it just is a way that we can get get these messages out. But I want to balance that with the word that is true, which is only the Lord can lead people unto the truth anyway. So we can share, we can tell people, we can shout and 
yell and get up on a mountain and proclaim the good news, but only those that have, he have ears to hear and only those that have eyes to see are going to behold the Lord anyway in the truth in this day until this time has been fulfilled and there could be a greater reaping and a greater harvest. So we thank God that it's the word of God that converts and it's his responsibility. Our responsibility is just to give the word out as the Lord leads us and he does the conversion uh, he does the change. He, he brings the change to people's hearts and to people's minds. So we thank God that uh, we, we don't, we're not under a heavy yoke of trying to convert the world. We just do that which God has ordained for us to do, that he's called us to do, and then we leave it up to the Holy Spirit to bring the conversion and to cause people's eyes to be open to the truth. So we're here in John, the third chapter, and... This is right where John the Baptist has been speaking to the people that were concerned about the fact that John was baptizing, but Jesus had begun to baptize, and people were turning and going to Jesus. And John, right in the verse above that we finished up on the last session, which was the 30th verse there, he must increase, but I must decrease, speaking about the increase of the kingdom of God that was coming through the life of the Lord Jesus as he manifested the life of the Father, there would be an increase of that eternal order, that eternal work that Jesus Christ came to bring, the kingdom of God upon the earth, and the former working that was the in part uh, preparation was going to begin to make way for the perfect order of Christ to be revealed. And then in 31, he who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. Well, we know that the Lord is the one, the firstborn from above. God was his father and Mary was his mother. He was the God man, the first of this new race of this new creation man. And he spoke the truth and he is the one who was above all. He is the high, great high priest. He is the Lord of lords. He is the king of kings. He is the great I am. He made that quite clear. That when you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And before Abraham was, Jesus says later in, in John, I am. He is the God-man. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel. All of the prophets and the law and everything in this scripture speaks of Jesus, our Lord. He has the name that's above every other name. His name is salvation. He is the one that was to be called the everlasting father, Isaiah prophesied about. He is first and foremost, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. All of God is manifest in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that is above all. But he who's of the earth, that is the natural man of carnality, born of Adam, under the law, speaks of the earthly things, sees through that very narrow lens and has a very uh, immature scope, can only see that which is right in front of him. He speaks of the earth, he sees according to the earth, and we're all there except for the enlightenment of the Lord who enlightens our eyes and begins to allow us to see the things concerning the kingdom of God. And that's what when Nicodemus came at the very beginning of this chapter and asked Jesus how he was able to do these things that he was doing. Because no man could do these things except he came from God. And Jesus is replying, this is always, we always come back to this. There has to be a birth from above to see and know and understand and comprehend the things of the kingdom of God. You cannot enter in, you cannot see, you cannot discern the things of the kingdom except being born again from above. Thank God that there's a people today that have been born again from above. And I trust that you have been born again of Christ and you're able to understand the things concerning the kingdom of God. Thank God that we can ask. And God will give us the Holy Spirit that we might know him in a true and a living way. Verse 32, And what he has seen and heard, this one from above, that he testifies, 
and no one receives his testimony. No man can see these things. No carnal man can understand these things. Paul the Apostle came to this great understanding and said, the natural mind, the carnal mind, wars against the things of the Spirit, fights against them, can't discern them, can't understand them, cannot receive the things of God because they are foolishness unto that carnal understanding. And truly, if I stand in my carnal mind, in my natural understanding, and the Lord begins to speak and show me things, if I don't come up, if the Lord doesn't give me grace to begin to see things according to the Spirit, according to the eternal realm of God that comes from the place of impossibility as far as our, our nature is concerned. When God says he can heal somebody that's uh, incurable according to modern medicine, my natural mind would war against that because I cannot see how it's possible according to the natural. But when I begin to see and understand that God made all things through the living word and that he's able to change and remake, there's another realm of the spirit where all things are possible with God. Even those things that are impossible with men are indeed possible with God. And not only can he do them, but he will do them. That takes the this, this spirit to proclaim those things in truth and in boldness. Not a wavering faith, but knowing the truth. So he says, he who receives his testimony has certified that God is true. And that's what happens when we, when we receive the word of God and stand upon it in the face of all opposition. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God. For God does not give the spirit by measure. Thank God. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. This could be a, a scripture of great condemnation and, and great terror if we didn't know the truth. The truth is, is no man can come to the Father. No man can come unto the Son except the Father draw him. In other words, no one can see this truth of the living Christ. No one can see the mysteries and understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God, of this eternal life that we had through Christ. Though the outer man perishes, people would, wouldn't understand it, couldn't understand it according to the flesh, because even a person that receives Christ as Lord and begins to walk by the Spirit, up until this point, we still see the natural body going to the grave. We still see people that are Christians and that have total faith in God dying. So according to the natural man, they, there's no benefit there that they can see. We proclaim to have eternal life, and yet we're still dying according to the flesh. We still are aging. Our body, we're still getting wrinkles and gray hair and losing our hair and all these things that happen as we grow and mature, we could say, but truly this body is dissolving. But that which we speak is not according to the natural, but according to the Spirit, a word that comes by faith. And we say that though this outer man is perishing, there's an inner man, a, a, a man that's been born again of God, a new soul, a new spirit, a new life that we're joined together in the Lord as one new spirit, as one new man, in him, there is eternal life, and that seed, that life of Christ, is incorruptible. So though the outer man is perishing, there's an inner man that's being renewed day by day, even by the Spirit, by the presence of the Lord, who's walking with us, who's talking with us, who's leading us daily into all truth, who's causing us to overcome every opposition and every enemy that we face through His great love, through the cross, through his burial, through the resurrection of the dead. We've received this truth, and we become a part of that body that's been born again from above, and we speak the truth. We become a part of that life of the Son of God, speaking his life today, becoming the light today, speaking those things that are not of earth, but bringing them to earth. And yet there's a man, or there's a, a, there's a nature that rejects the life of God. 
And he is the one who does not believe the Son and shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Well, what's the wrath of God? Does that mean that God's angry at all those that can't see the Lord? Now, why? how could he be angry? How could he be angry when it's quite clear that God has subjected the creature or us in our natural state, we have been subjected to vanity. Not willingly, Paul said, but subjected in hope. And there's a hope in all creation, a groaning, a travail, to see, to behold, the manifestation of the sons of God, a life that's from above. Even those that don't know it, there's a groan, there's a, there's a cry in their heart. To see something beyond what they can see according to this natural, frail, temporal life. And yet in their, in their unregenerated state, they stand in opposition to the, Christ of cro to the cross of Christ. They're enemies of the cross of Christ, and their God is their belly, and their glory is in their shame. But our citizenship is in heaven. And yet we say those who reject Christ right now are under God's wrath. There's a law that's been set in order. It's not that God's mad or angry at the unregenerated man. It's that there's a law that's already been set in order. The law was set all the way back in the days when Adam walked in the cool of the day. And prior to that, when God had made a law by his own word, that if you eat from another tree other than the tree of life, or if you tr eat, you can eat from every tree in the garden, but if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in that day you will die. That's the wrath of God that's been poured out. It's against disobedience. It doesn't mean that he's angry. It means that, that law is a law of wrath against disobedience, or it's a, it's a law of judgment against disobedience, that in dying you'll die. It, when you when you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam, in that day you're going to die. Well, Adam didn't immediately die, but the wrath or the judgment of God or that law was at work in his flesh, and progressively he died until the day when he gave up the ghost and his body was laid down in the dust and returned to the dust. And all of those who are standing in unbelief and not able to receive the truth of the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ, they're under that law of sin and death. And that law is for the disobedient and for the lawless. And it's at work in all the children of disobedience who have not yet come to the knowledge of the Son of God. But remember, and we must always remember, that that knowledge comes not by choice, but by grace you are saved, lest any man should boast. So we thank God that he's going to open up the eyes of the blind. And we're in the day when the eyes are of the blind are being opened and the ears of the deaf are, being, deaf are being unstopped. And those who are unable to walk with God in the kingdom are being made whole through a spiritual working, through a word. This is the reason why we speak the word of truth. That we might bring people out from under the wrath and the judgment of God. The order of that first covenant, into the covenant of grace and mercy and truth that is in Jesus Christ. He who comes from above is above all. And he speaks those things pertaining to the everlasting kingdom of God, the everlasting kingdom of light, bringing a knowledge and understanding of the truth to all people through the revelation of Jesus Christ, through the unveiling of the glory of God that's in our Lord and our Savior, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world.